here for JM Sports 100 and the JM Sports Show. How is it going? I am here to talk a little bit about Wild Card Weekend in the 2016-17 NFL Playoffs. And first of all, before I like to do that, though, I would like to apologize for how unorganized I was throughout the NFL season. And most of uh, the NFL picks for this year did not make it to video. Uh, they made it to Facebook and Twitter, uh, mostly Facebook. Which is unfortunate that I really didn't try harder to get them out to the rest of you guys because we had, uh, I think I'd have to go back and look, but I think we had, I think we had, uh, the best year that I've ever had picking in the, uh, you know, seven years I've been doing it, six years, whatever it is, uh, that I've been doing it. So I do apologize for that. In fact, it got so bad that I even neglected uh, the record. And I went back and looked today before I started doing this video, and I hadn't kept a record of my NFL record for the year um, since uh, week five. I kept all my picks, but not the actual win-loss record, and I hadn't updated that since like week three or four. So I had to sit there and uh, update that through uh, for the rest of the season. That took me a while, so I'm glad that's over, and hopefully next year we can do a better job of, uh, of keeping up with that. So, uh, like I said, we had a great year. Um, you know, hopefully you guys believe it, and if, you know, a lot of the picks are, are up on the JM Sports Show Facebook page, if you want to go check them out. Uh, the last few weeks, I will admit, are not, but, uh, if you want proof of those picks, I suppose I can find a way to, uh, to give you those too. So, we ended up finishing the year, it was a, like I said, it was a pretty big year for us, as we finished the year 174 wins, 81 losses, and 2 ties. One thing I wish I would have got on video is that we did get our 1,000th uh, win in the NFL this season, and we ended up with 1,056 of them overall for a uh, lifetime. 604 losses and 5 ties, now with the, of course, 2 ties that took place in this season. So, there you go. There is that, and that brings us to the wild card weekend that, of course... Starts tomorrow on Saturday with, of course, the big game that everybody is talking about, the one everyone is definitely most excited for, and I say that with all sorts of sarcasm, as that is the game that can be seen at 4.30 Eastern Time on ESPN and on ABC. I believe that game will be simulcast on both ESPN and ABC, and it will be... Either Matt McGloin or Connor Crook, probably Connor Crook, against probably Brock Osweiler. The Raiders and the Texans. Sad thing is, somebody's going to win that football game. Let's talk about the Raiders here for just a second. Uh, obviously, they were, I think, a lot of people's pick, including mine, to go far. This Raiders team showed a lot of talent throughout the year. But I think the one thing that we see now, of course, you know, Derek Carr having the uh, broken leg, I believe that was back on Christmas Eve that that had happened. Um, I think we see how valuable he is. Oakland lost Derek Carr, they got Matt McGloin, and they've they've got Matt McGloin, they got Connor Cook, McGloin's hurt now too, and the Raiders cannot move the football. Which leads me to a beef that I have. And it was a beef that I've had for uh, about a week or so, a couple of weeks now, and I know it's been it's been echoed. So if you've heard it other places, don't think I took it from somewhere, because I think it's a pretty obvious argument. How in the hell is Derek Carr not being mentioned for MVP? I'm not saying he has to win it. I think that'll probably go to Matt Ryan or Aaron Rodgers. How? How can you not have Derek Carr in the MVP conversation? Look at what he's done to a Raiders team that had a, that had a losing culture for over a decade now. Now that he's gone, the Raiders can't win a game. They may win in Houston on Saturday if they can beat Brock Osweiler. It doesn't matter whoever wins this game. They're not going far. The worst thing that could have happened to Houston was, believe it or not, the injury to Tom Savage. 
I'm not saying Tom Savage is great. But Tom Savage has shown that he's a little better than Brock Osweiler. Brock Osweiler is a $72 million fail. That contract is terrible. ESPN's going to lose a lot of money on this game. Well, that's not just the fault of Brock Osweiler. But this is going to be bad football. I may not even watch this game. This game is going to be bad. And <laughs> who's going to win? Coin flip. I think he, I, I, I don't know. I honestly have no idea. Um, like I said, this is a, this is a coin flip game. I'm going to say Houston wins this game. Strictly because the Raiders' defense is not that good, and I do think that Brock Osweiler will be able to make some plays. I don't think he'll make a lot. He'll turn the ball over. It's going to be an ugly game. It'll probably be a low-scoring game. It won't be much fun to watch. And outside of Raiders and Texans fans, not a lot of people are probably going to watch it. Hell, Raiders and Texans fans may not watch a whole lot of it. So, I do have Houston winning the game with no confidence at all. That brings us to the NFC wildcard game that takes place on Saturday night between the Detroit Lions and the Seattle Seahawks. 8.15 Eastern Time on NBC. The Lions, of course, made it in because the Redskins lost to the Giants last Sunday. Had that been the case, the Lions would not have been in this spot after losing to the Packers on Sunday night, which allowed the Packers to clinch the NFC North. Meanwhile, you got the Seattle Seahawks. Seattle doesn't look that great. Detroit looks better. However, I think there are a few things that work against Detroit in this situation. Seattle coming off of a loss last week, an embarrassing loss. Tough loss, embarrassing loss that they shouldn't have had. They're not going to be happy. Now, the Lions are coming off of a loss last week, too. I understand that. But the Lions are traveling out west. Teams that travel out west do not travel well. Seattle is a tough place to play. And I also think, too, Detroit showed us last week, and I said it on Facebook, for those of you who are friends with me on Facebook, I said it after the Lions lost to the Cowboys on that Monday night game. I said, because I saw a lot of Lions fans complaining. All the officials, all the officials, all the officials. No, Lions fans. This is what your team is. This is what the franchise is. This is what the franchise has always been. You can't always blame the officials. The Lions are not good in big spots. They choke in big spots. They choked on Monday night. That Monday night game against the Cowboys didn't play well. Couldn't get the job done at home against Aaron Rodgers and the Packers last week, albeit the Packers are a red-hot team right now. Still couldn't get the job done. I didn't expect you to get the job done here. It's a big game. I didn't expect the Lions to step up, and why would I? They never have. They've never shown me that they can. The Seahawks are a better big game team. They've got the home field advantage. Central Lake, tough place to play. Seahawks get the win. That will move us now to Sunday. Dolphins and Steelers. 105 Eastern Time on CBS. What more can you say about this game? Is there really a lot to say? Everybody's worried about some. I shouldn't say everybody. Some people worried about Pittsburgh after what happened against Cleveland last week. Settle down. There was no Antonio Brown, no Le'Veon Bell, no Ben Roethlisberger. You're fine. Roethlisberger goes down. I think you're in trouble. Meanwhile, you've got Miami. Finally making it back into the playoffs. Decent team. Except no Ryan Tannehill. I like Matt Moore. But Matt Moore is not a starter in this league. Matt Moore is not a quarterback who's going to win you a lot of games. He's not going to win you a playoff game. He's a decent backup. 
and that's what he is. So if you ask me, Matt Moore versus Pittsburgh, who am I taking? Sorry, I'm not talking much about the, much about this game. There's not a lot to say. I think the Steelers get the win. Brings us to our final game of the weekend at 4:40 Eastern Time on Fox on Sunday afternoon. The New York Giants and the Green Bay Packers. Two of the better teams in the NFL, of course, Packers are red hot. Aaron Rodgers came out and said, "We can run the table." That's exactly what they did. They ran the table. They got their pieces back. Jordy Nelson looks real, real good. They found a running back and former wide receiver Ty Montgomery. Also doesn't hurt to have Christian Michael, that Seattle player. Doesn't hurt to have him. The Packers are getting it done. However, when it comes to the playoffs in Lambeau Field, the Giants have a tendency to get it done. Eli Manning has beaten Aaron Rodgers in the playoffs at Lambeau twice. I believe he's 2-0. He's got a better playoff record at Lambeau than Aaron Rodgers does. I can't explain Eli Manning to you. I can't explain the Giants to you. This is when Eli Manning is at his best, the NFL postseason. I can't explain it, but it's just how it goes. I think one problem, well, there's a couple problems the Packers could have here. The biggest problem the Packers could have is stopping Odell Beckham. The Packers' secondary is rough. Outside of Ha Ha Clinton Dix and an occasional play from Micah Hyde, they don't have much to get excited about. They really don't. Demarius Randall makes good plays. Good player. Can't stay healthy and makes a lot of mistakes. Quentin Rollins, who obviously his health is 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 the more concerning thing at this point. Quentin Rollins. Okay, anyone who knows me knows I'm a Packer. I'm a Packer fan. Uh, I I've seen every every Packer snap this year. Quentin Rollins has never impressed me. He looks lost. He won't be in this game because he did have the injury against Detroit last week. My point is the Packers secondary is rough. The Packers have a lot of holding penalties that they shouldn't have. The line gets a little bit grabby. The offensive line gets a little bit grabby. Defensive. Excuse me. Defensively sometimes the Packers can get a little bit grabby. That can't happen here. This is going to be a, t- a tough Giants team. The Giants, I believe, since like week, and I, I'm going to get the week wrong, so please don't quote me on this, since like week 7, I believe, week 6, the Giants have the best defense in the NFL. That could be a problem. Aaron Rodgers, though, is red hot. Aaron Rodgers is healthy. The weather is... There's conflicting reports as to what the weather is supposed to be like in Green Bay. I've heard 7 degrees, I've heard 13 degrees. Either way, it's going to be cold. Either way, that is going to play a factor, I do believe. I think this game is close. I think this game is going to come down to a crucial turnover. The question is, is it going to be Aaron Rodgers? Is it going to be Eli Manning? Is it going to be the Packers? Is it going to be the Giants? I do believe this game will come down, as I said, to a crucial turnover. And I also I'm gonna make a bold, I'm gonna make a bold bit of a bold prediction here. I think the winner of this game will go on to the Super Bowl. Now I truly believe this, or you can say that I'm picking with my heart. I'm not sure right now anybody in the NFC can stop the Packers. I'm not sure if the Packers can beat the Patriots, but we'll worry about that if that indeed were to become a potential reality. I don't know that there's a team right now in the NFC that can beat the Packers, though. And that's not me talking with bias. That's me saying that I think this Packers team is red, red hot. And as long as they can find a way to keep OBJ fairly quiet, the Packers win this game. 
By the way, I did forget to mention it in the beginning. Our uh, playoff record, we didn't pick all. I don't, I don't remember if we picked all the playoff games last year, now that I think about it. But uh, we went 10 and... Uh, I'm sorry. No, we did not pick all. Couldn't have. Could we have? No. I uh, went 7-1 in the playoffs last year. We are 22-11, and 11, lifetime in the playoffs, and 1-1 uh, one in one the Super Bowls, but um, I'll explain the Super Bowl story when we get to the Super Bowl. So, how's it going to do for me? Don't forget to like the Rams Sports Show page on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. Links, as always, are down in the description. And that is going to do for me. I'm Jonathan was up for the Sports 100, the Jam Sports Show. Let the NFL playoffs begin, and I will see you guys later.